Most people with a keen interest in World War II submarines holds the German Type 21 in high regard. Why is that? To answer this question, I will in this video outline the requirements it needed to deliver on and where these requirements originated from and how they translated into the design of the hull, propulsion and other technical upgrades. To address the requirements this type of submarine needed to deliver on, we first need to outline what the general offensive and defensive characteristics was for a submarine in World War II. A submarine's primary offensive advantage was to stay undetected and using the advantage of surprise in an attack. This was achieved by staying submerged and doing so traveling silently. To counter this, the enemy would use detection methods like sonar as an active means of detection and listening devices as a passive mean. A submarine's defense was achieved by using the same methods, stay undetected and if found use evasive maneuvers but always silently to avoid detection. Both the offensive and defensive methods thus heavily depended on the submarine's ability to stay submerged and being able to move at as high speed as possible while not giving itself away by generating too much noise. Prior to the Type 21 design, previous types of German World War II submarine designs was essentially upgraded World War I designs by Hans Teschel. These submarines would primarily sail on the surface and would only dive when faced with a threat in the form of, for example, airplanes or destroyers. Sailing submerged was achieved with the use of electric motors and batteries, but this was severely limiting as the speed was significantly lower and range had limitations as well. This meant that when the submarine had to dive to evade, for example, a destroyer, the submarine was rather limited in its movements and range and would not perform long-range travels submerged. The design was for it to stay submerged temporarily and primarily travel at the surface, essentially making it as submersible and not a submarine. So which event occurred which caused the need for something different than the existing designs? When the development of the war enabled the Allies to patrol the skies above the Bay of Biscay, the consequences of the limited ability to stay submerged became painfully clear. The Allies would target the submarines during the transit from their submarine bases in France to their patrol areas in the Atlantic. Eventually, the losses in this area were so great that they consisted of 56% of all U-boat losses in the entire war. The high number of losses earned the Bay of Biscay the nickname Death Valley. It was these very high number of losses which were the primary reasons why Germany needed to rethink the existing designs to deliver on the defensive nature of the submarines. They needed to be able to stay submerged at high speed for long periods of time. One of the areas that had already seen some development was in the area of new propulsion system. This work was carried out by Helmut Walter and is today known as the Walter Boats. Walter had been working on a new form of propulsion system. It was based on a liquid which through a catalyst generated steam at high pressure which was fed to a turbine. This solution could deliver on high underwater speed and contrary to diesel engines, it didn't need access to fresh air from the outside. However, in 1942 the design was still experimental and the work needed to make it operational was comprehensive and there were several unresolved issues. For example, with the fuel in form of hydrogen peroxide which was a highly reacted fluid and thus it needed special storage. On top of this, the inefficiencies in the fuel meant that a very large supply needed to be carried on the submarine, much larger than conventional diesel. In the end, this meant that it was not a realistic option for a propulsion system at this point in the war. The work done with the Walter boats were not wasted efforts though. The proposed hull design for the hydrogen peroxide powered Type 18 was used as a blueprint for what would become the Type 21. 
This had the benefit that much time was saved as the calculations for the hydrodynamic profile had already been done and the tank test had been completed. This hull design was more of a teardrop look compared to previous design and delivered a much lower water resistance. It was clear that it was designed to sail primarily underwater. The Type 21 design also featured several changes and innovation to existing designs. The most noticeable when looking at the outer hull is the absence of a deck gun, a much more streamlined conning tower, and objects like antennas, snorkel, diving planes were retractable so they would generate much less resistance when sailing submerged. When Walter's hydrogen peroxide plant could not be used, it posed a significant problem, and was it not for a new idea, this could have stopped the project. Two engineers named Schuer and Bröcking came up with a rather simple solution to deliver uh, to the requirements of long periods of submerged sailing at higher speeds. They proposed to stay with a traditional but well-proven diesel-electric solution, but simply add an additional hull for the batteries under the submarine. This additional capacity would deliver to the requirements and initial quick calculations showed that it was indeed possible and thus a solution was found. The new propulsion system design paired with a much improved snorkel would enable the submarine to travel long periods underwater at full speed of more than 17 knots. This was a game changer compared to the maximum of only 7 knots for the Type 7 and the Type 7 could only sail submerged temporarily. Other innovations for the Type 21 consisted of a much improved torpedo reloading system for its six forward torpedo tubes. This new system enabled the Type 21 to launch three six torpedo salvos in 20 minutes. In comparison, it took around 10 minutes to reload one torpedo tube on the Type 7. This innovation was obviously key as the submarine had limited time to attack before it needed to evade threats. During the war, submarines traditionally needed to get visual sightings to get accurate data on where vessels discovered with the hydrophone was. A new device called the SU or Nibelung was developed. It worked by first using a passive part to get a bearing on the target and then it would send three pulses to determine the range, course and approximate speed of the target. This was done without the target being able to determine a bearing on the submarine. Thus, it could be done without being accurately detected. It was originally aimed for deployment on the Type 7C42 variant, but was eventually installed on the Type 21. The standard hydrophone, or GHD, in previous design was a set of sound receiving devices near the forward dive planes on each side of the submarine. This enabled the submarine to detect a single vessel 20 kilometers away and a convoy at 100 kilometers away. However, the placement on the side and the fact that they were static meant that the accuracy would decrease rapidly the more the sources of the sounds were closing the ahead or aft of the submarine. For the Type 21, better electronics and a housing underneath the bow of the submarine was developed. This resulted in a significant improvement as it would now cover an arc of plus minus 170 degrees. Unlike previous types, the Type 21 used its electric motors as its main propulsion, only using the diesel engines to recharge the batteries. Adding to this were a set of creeper motors. They drew power from a separate set of electric motors by a set of V-bells, which further reduced the speed. The result was that the Type 21 could achieve six knots submerged in near silence, where the Type 7 needed to run its electric motors at near full speed in order to achieve the same speed and at a significant noise level. The system was so silent that in the US Navy test after World War II, they could not accurately locate a Type 21 submarine running silent using the Kriber motors, even as close as 220 meters. 
Adding to this, the overall sound level of a Type 21 submarine traveling submerged at 15 knots emitted the same amount of sound as a US Navy Baleo class traveling at 8 knots. All in all, the sound levels emitted from the Type 21 was a massive leap forward in a submarine's ability to stay silent while submerged. The Type 21 was not only an innovation in designs, but also in the way it was constructed and assembled. The Type 21 was planned to be assembled using prefabricated parts, which at the time was a highly innovative process for U-boats. The parts consisted of eight sections and a conning tower. Two of the sections housed the electric motors and the diesel engines. The end-to-end -end process was designed around five stages. Steel erectors, fitting out yards, assembly yards, post-launch outfitting, and tests. The initial production was faced with several issues, shortage of material and labor, disruption of the supply lines, and general impacts of war like air raids. Also, it should not be underestimated the additional teething problems by using new ways of construction and assembly and building new crews for a completely new submarine design. So the whole program was soon well beyond its original schedule. Politics dictated that the first Type 21 would launch on Hitler's birthday on the 20th of April 1944. However, it had to be kept afloat using buoyancy bags and was towed back to a dry dock for completion after its presentation. Initially, the first submarine to enter service was the U-2501 and was taken over by the Kriegsmarine on the June 15, 1944, two months after the presentation. The rush constructions and problems with the new process meant that it had to return urgently already in July of the same year with extensive problems with its Module 2. To mitigate the impact of air raids had on construction and assembly, a massive bunker near Bremen called the Valentin Bunker was constructed. This huge concrete bunker would enable the submarines to be built using a flow line principle and was planned to deliver a new Type 21 submarine every 56 hours. However, by the time the war came to an end, no Type 21 was ever completed at the Valentin bunker. Only a few builds were ever started. In the end, 119 Type 21s were commissioned and built between 1943 and 1945, but only four made it to active duty. After the war, a number was scuttled, some sunk and some divided between the Allied forces. Today, the only remaining Type 21 is the Wilhelm Bauer in Bremerhaven. So to answer the question, why is this submarine significant? The answer is not found in its number in active service, nor did it play any decisive role during the war. The answer is not in the build quality either. Actually, during the US investigations of the Type 21 they brought back, they found many severe construction flaws. No, the significant is found in the way its design innovations impacted many post-war submarines designs around the world. Traces of the Type 21 can be found in the US Guppy program, British submarine classes, French, several Soviet classes, and of course many later German designs, to name a few, and this impact lasted for many decades to come. A good example for how far this design made it is here in Denmark where I live. Even we had submarines with the traces of the Type 21. The Danish Springer now a museum, was originally a Norwegian submarine which was based on the German Type 205, which is a derived design from the Type 21. So yeah, the legacy of the Type 21 can be found even in Little Denmark. The US Navy did a post-war analysis of the U-3008, so if you have further interest in some more details of the Type 21, I have placed a link to the result of that analysis in the description. And on that note, 
I would like to thank you for watching and please ensure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also consider supporting my channel.